So I'm a Gottman level three uh, therapist, and I love the Gottman's work because, I mean, they, they researched couples for 40 years, and they really know their stuff, and they have so many great templates, protocols to to help couples work through their difficulties. So, so yeah, um, they have really great methods. And one of their stats that they came up with their research is that I don't know if couples really give them, give each other five or, you know, five minutes a day. I, I can't remember the exact stat, but they, they're like, if you, if you connect, if you actually talk for maybe five or 10 minutes a day, like literally, I think it's less than 10 minutes. You're going to have a, like a really healthy relationship. I mean, that shows you how crazy things are nowadays that, that people don't even have five or 10 minutes to talk. Like, think of it. Maybe you're just going to decide to do the dishes together every night. Maybe you're going to decide to walk the dog together every night. Maybe you're going to decide to, you know, have 10 minutes, like when you're having your coffee in the morning. Like give a person that you care about at least five minutes of conversation a day. Welcome to my podcast, I Think I Can. My intention for the podcast is for individuals to begin a transformational journey towards self-awareness and self-actualization. And I do this by telling my own story, as well as all the stories from my past clients. And I do this so that you too can feel safe knowing that change is available to you, but also so you can take more responsibility for your life in three specific ways, in your health, your self, and your wealth. Now sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, my name is Luella Yonk, and for those of you who don't know me yet, I'm a psychotherapist. Um, you can call me a relationship coach, call me whatever you like. And my mission today is to give you some really valuable content about relationships. So you might know that that my clients come to me either individually or as a couple, but if they come to me as a couple, I still stress a lot of individual work because I really want to empower people to begin to understand that they have a lot more, well, responsibility and leverage in creating an amazing relationship than they actually think that they might have, you know, like, I think a lot of people feel very hopeless and helpless um, personally, but also in their relationship, just feeling like, you know, because you can't change another person and everybody, you know, we've heard that term over and over, you know, you can't change another person because you can't change another person. People often feel like, well, if I can't change that person, how am I going to change this relationship? And you know what? You've probably heard this before too, but you can change yourself and that will change the relationship. Now, I'm not saying that in every single case, in every single relationship, that you just doing your own work is going to change the other person. That's not necessarily going to happen. I mean, sometimes the other person is just not willing to evolve with you, right? Like you're doing a lot of personal work. You're feeling like this is making me become a different person. I'm interacting with the world differently. And you would hope that your partner 
is seeing you do this and kind of likes what he or she sees and will start emulating you and changing themselves. Most of the time, that's what happens. But there are times where that person is just, you know, maybe suffering um, in their mental health so much, so much maybe in their emotional health, who knows. But I'm going to tell you that the majority of the time, if you're willing to change, if you're willing to grow, if you're willing to evolve as a human being, it's going to it's going to better your relationship 100%. And you know what? It's always very worthwhile because you're going to be able to leave that relationship with a lot more clarity and confidence that you're doing the right thing. So it's just, it's a win-win situation, no matter what. So knowing that over the years, I've, you know, I've, I like to make this very simple and having a good relationship is very, for the men out there, I'm just going to tell you right now, it's very similar to running a good business. So in other words, in running a business, you need to connect with people. You need to you know, network and, and make good, strong connections in order to make good business deals, right? That's not surprising. So I've sort of, I want to make this simple. So I, I chose three important words that you can always, you know, remember and think about if you want to build good, solid relationships and that is to always remember that there's compromise in any sort of business deal. You might need to compromise. You're going to need to collaborate. And the third one is that you're going to have to build connection. So we're going to go through all these three C words. But I want, you, I want to add another C word like sort of an umbrella term that's going to go, it's going to, yeah, cover all these other th three C words. And that's curiosity. Curiosity to me is so important when it comes to relationships because curiosity actually means, well, it, it means a willingness. You have a willingness to be able to see another person's perspective. And this is super important. If you're not willing to listen and hear another person's perspective that you're trying to collaborate with, that you're trying to connect with, that you're trying to maintain any sort of relationship with, if you're not willing to hear their perspective, if you're not curious about why they're thinking the way they're thinking, and you much rather just say, you're wrong and I'm right, there's not even a point in having a conversation. You have to realize, and this, especially men, it's not about being right and wrong. This is not a power struggle. Well, I shouldn't, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to stereotype people here, but like, I mean, men tend to want to like show some, you know, power in the relationship a little bit more than women. Women are much more, you know, getting into the feelings and, and I mean, men hate that, right? It's just sort of like, oh, this is feeling really uncomfortable. Um, because men don't like to speak about their feelings. It, it's sort of, especially for men, it's sort of like this, um, you know, weakness. They, they associate speaking about their feelings as a sign of weakness. You know, being vulnerable is actually being very weak, right? If I show you or display my emotions or my feelings to you, that's, that's like, 
this shows that I'm kind of a weak person and, you know, cry baby and, and all those things that you were told as a young person, it's sort of like, you know, big boys don't cry. Um, um, don't, yeah, you know, you know, it all, um, toughen up and all those things. Well, I mean, that's, if, if you're still operating like that and you're a grown adult, um, you need to shake that because when I talk about connection, the one of the three C words, connection is all about showing your feelings. Okay. Um, and okay. So let's break down the three C words here. First of all, again, reminder, curiosity is the primary, like, C word, the umbrella term that shows that you're willing to have conversations. Okay. And this is all about conversation. Like, I mean, couples come to me and they're like, Oh, we have like a con, like none of our conversations go anywhere. We have a communication problem. Um, boy, there's a lot of C words, right? When you think about relationships, conversation, communication, curiosity, collaboration, connection, and Compromise. Who would think? Okay. Relationships is an, a C word, I guess. Anyway. Um, okay. Connection. Connection, showing your feelings. But to me, connection, connection is just being in the same room. You know, being in the shape, like to me, being together is connection. Um, that might mean watching a movie together. To me, that's connection. It might mean sharing a meal together. It, it's like just being in the same space. I'm connecting with another human being in this space. Um, like, because you have to think body awareness or... Um, um, body language, you know, pragmatics. It's, it's sort of like you can connect with eye contact. Like eye, eye contact is huge when you think about connection. Your voice, your tone of voice, um, the volume, everything is you are like sending signals to that other person without even opening your mouth sometimes. So, so connection is to me sharing, sharing space with someone else. It's huge. You you don't feel alone. You're connected in some way with another individual. Now, compromise is okay. Getting let's let's talk again business. Okay, so connection. You need to connect with the person in order to make some sort of business deal. Um, you, you probably connect in the, in, in the sense that, you know, the type of business, you know, like if, if you're somebody that owns a gym, chances are you're going to connect with a person that also values the ability to, you know, gain muscle and move and do cardio and take care of their health. Like you're, you just connect on a very, fundamental level uh, without even knowing the person you connect okay similar interests things like that so I, I'm not going to go on and on about connection because I think you get the picture that you don't actually even have to know somebody on a super deep level in order to connect with them you can just have similar interests and operate in similar ways. Now, collaboration is also super important. Okay, so I I belong to a group called Collaborative um, Collaborative Practice Manitoba. Collaborative Practice Manitoba is an organization. Um, I think it was created by lawyers, uh, lawyers, uh, family lawyers, family law that were sort of sick and tired of couples bickering in their offices. 
um, and they saw it as like a waste of time. There was a lot of discussions happening in lawyers' offices that didn't need to happen. And, and because, I mean, they were arguing and the lawyers, lawyers like to focus on law. <laughs> they actually like the black and white you know, the linear type of thinking. And it's sort of like, okay, this is a law. And according to section blah, 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 uh, an article, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is what's happening, you know, with, this is how you two have to separate your finances or your assets or your liabilities. And, uh, and, um, you know, a parenting agreement, um, that's going to be drawn up, et cetera, et cetera. So they, um, they collaborated with relationship coaches. So I'm a relationship coach with Collaborative Practice Manitoba, um, and also parenting coaches. And they said, you know, here's a couple. We want you to take care of their file. And when you have all the disagreements and all the emotional stuff worked out, you can send them back to us and then we'll, we'll tell them what the laws are here and we'll create their separation agreement. Brilliant, right? Makes so much sense. So there's a lot of collaboration that happens, um, you know, with, with me and the other relationship coach and our two, um, respective clients. Um, we have four way meetings. We collaborate with them and then work out all that stuff. And then they go back to the lawyers. But when it comes to you and your partner, when, in terms of collaboration, collaboration means talking. See, like as a relationship coach with Collaborative Practice Manitoba, and by the way, like this is across the provinces, this is across the nations. Um, if you're an American watching this right now, there's collaborative practice, you know, in the, in the States, it, it's huge. So, um, but it gives a, a, a venue, a, a place where a couple who are not communicating very well are not talking to each other because of various reasons, we, we give them that safe space to speak and talk to one another so that each other, you know, are actually listening to one another. And, and this is very powerful because sometimes, you know, without the mediator there, you could call us a mediator, Without the mediator there, they just can't talk because they're vo both focused on their own, you know, story or a certain intent. You know, I, often it's sort of like, I need to convince you I'm right and you're wrong. And as soon as you're, you know, as soon as you understand that you're, you're wrong and I'm right, you know, we'll come to a solution. That's not the way it works. So collaboration with your partner, collaborate with your partner, actually have a conversation with your partner. And I'm going to tell you that way too many couples avoid difficult conversations. Let's face it, we're pulled in so many different directions during the day. Our bandwidth is way too wide. We're, we're, you know, we're asked to do this, we're, we need to do that. Um, and let's just face it, like social media is a huge culprit in this. It's sort of like, even my myself, I get pulled into it sometimes, you know, I open up my phone app, Instagram, Facebook, and I, I open it up to make a post, or maybe do a live. But before I do a live, make a reel, make a post a story, it's sort of like, oh my God, that, you know, what was that? Like that gained my attention, this, this image, this visual, um, somebody else talking, it's sort of like all oh, lights, cameras, actions, right? Like, it's like, okay, so we are pulled in so many different directions. So what can we do? Well, we make time out each single day to have a conversation with our partner. We have to put time aside. Um, 
and and talk. You know, maybe it's it's like like the Gottmans. I'm a Gottman level three uh, therapist, and I love the Gottmans' work because. I mean, they, they researched couples for 40 years and they really know their stuff and they have so many great templates, protocols to, to help couples work through their difficulties. So, so yeah, um, they have really great methods. And one of their stats that they came up with their research is that I don't know if couples really give them, give each other five or, you know, five minutes a day. I, I can't remember the exact stat, but they, they're like, if you, if you connect, if you actually talk for maybe five or 10 minutes a day, like literally, I think it's less than 10 minutes. You're going to have a, like a really healthy relationship. I mean, that shows you how crazy things are nowadays that, that people don't even have five or 10 minutes to talk. Like, think of it. Maybe you're just going to decide to do the dishes together every night. Maybe you're going to decide to walk the dog together every night. Maybe you're going to decide to, you know, have 10 minutes, like when you're having your coffee in the morning, like give a person that you care about at least five minutes of conversation a day where you're not distracted. That's the other thing. Again, that's the phone problem, right? It's sort of like, oh, yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. But at the same time, you're looking at your phone. Makes no sense. Like, you can't do that. Multitasking is not not a thing. You can't. Like, you can't. You can't focus on two things at a time. Something has to give. So relationships aren't that much work. Like, And think of it, what if you were having, like, what if you actually had a business lunch? Like, and you were doing some sort of business deal with someone. How well would that go if you spent, like, if this person was talking to you and you're on your phone answering a text? Like, it's not going to be a good business deal, right? So treat treat your partner the same way as you would think of yourself. Like, this is a business. This is a business. It's my relationship and probably the most important business that you're ever going to own in your life. Um, there's assets. There's, there's really important assets that you, that, that you have in that business, right? It's everything. So, Think of compromise as simply talking with your partner. And I mentioned difficult conversations. They're difficult because they're difficult because there's some sort of change that has to happen. Like, let's think of it. We avoid difficult conversations like we avoid the plague. I mean, if I asked anybody they'd rather be sitting in a dentist chair than having a difficult conversation with someone, right? It's sort of like they do everything in their, and it's crazy. Instead of just having the difficult conversation, they will spend not only hours, but days in their head going through the conversation in their head. Like think of it, revolving like like a washing machine rinse and repeat the same conversation and they're postulating all the different ways that that conversation is going to go down the drain like i love the work of um dr edith eager she is um a holocaust holocaust survivor I, she's in her mid 90s and she wrote two amazing books. One was called The Choice and the other one's called The Gift. And it's really about being in the moment and um, being in such gratitude for what you have. I mean, think of what that woman went through. I mean, so, but she has this term, stop revolving and in, like um, instead evolve change instead of 
going over and over. And the only way that change is going to happen in your relationship is if you have difficult conversations, but they're difficult only because like you make them difficult. Like it's like conflict. You've heard this before. Conflict is first of all, so normal and it actually, um, it's necessary because conflict actually means you have some passion in your blood. Like you care enough about your relationship that you're going to get uncomfortable, be in discomfort, and you want change to happen. It's super easy to ignore these difficulties in, you know, in your relationship, distract yourself from that and avoid the whole situation. That's where relationships really, you know, if I was going to say there's, there's never one thing, but avoidance and distraction and not willing to have difficult conversations would, to me, would be one of the top reasons why, probably is the top reason, actually. I would say compromise would be the second biggest But, you know, if we would just make, if we would normalize difficult conversations, if we would normalize uh, conflict in any relationship, so many more relationships would last. I mean, it's just normal. It doesn't have to be a yelling match and, and it shouldn't be a yelling match. It's just sort of like, okay, there's conflict. Again, related to business. It's like if you had an employee that was, um, you know, not showing up to work on time every single day. Are you going to ignore that? And just like, you know, to a point where instead of the eight hour day, he's showing up for 45 minutes. (laughs) No, no, you're going to have that uncomfortable conversation and say, you know, this is not working. And if they're not willing to compromise with you um, or, you know, just follow the rules of the, of the you know, our, um, our service agreement, um, then I'm going to have to let you go. And in terms of there are rules in a relationship, too. There are rules in having conversations with your partner. And let's be honest. It's these rules are not difficult. These rules are just, you know, yelling. Like, I mean, raising your voice is never like it's, it's, that's, that's a rule. We don't do that because I'm going to tell you when you raise your voice towards your partner, you know what your partner does? It's like, like the, just think of the image being, you know, I can't hear you. They literally shut off their ability to hear you because it's a protective mechanism. You know, it's it's sort of like that's what a child would do, right? They would cover their ears because they're scared. They're scared. And I'm not saying, you know, men scare women only. Women often very much scare men. Women can scream. Women can yell as well. And... Like, so the next time you, well, usually it's a bit of a a, a subconscious behavior that, you know, you don't even realize you're yelling. Honestly, you don't. Most of the time you don't even yell. I mean, sometimes you do. Um, But like, I mean, if you grew up in a house where all they did was scream and yell your parents, you know, at each other, you would normalize that. And you probably don't even realize you're raising your voice. But if you're going to get to the point of yelling, just you you realize, okay, this conversation is not going to go anywhere and I need to leave the room and I need to self-regulate and I need to come back when I can keep a certain volume. Otherwise we're not having this conversation. You know, it's a, becomes a non-versation. It just, this is not happening. So there are rules Sorry, I I sort of digress there. But if you're still following me, I was talking about the rules of, um, you know, like just like there's a rules like in a workplace, there's rules in our house. 
We don't yell at each other. We speak to one another. Um, we don't criticize. Again, the Gottman work is super great. The Gottmans call it the four horses of the apocalypse come running into your relationship. These four horsemen are criticism, content, contempt, which is just like a much nastier way of criticizing someone. Contempt is when you um, diminish the other person. Um, you know, if, if it's, it's almost like, it's very narcissistic if it's, it's, you know, it's sort of like, well, if you were only more like me, um, you know, it's, it's just very diminutive. Um, so there's contempt, uh, criticism, stonewalling, which is actually just ignoring the other person. The other person's talking to you. You're just like zoned out. You're, you're basically put a wall between you and the person. Um, Ignoring the person, you could say, just dismissing the person is, a, is another really good term. You know, again, it's sort of like, I can't hear you. You know, I don't see you. I can't hear you. Um, you're not, you're not here in my, my world. So dismissing. And the third one is mm, tough one, defensiveness. That's also a rule, you know, take responsibility. Take response, like any couple that comes to me and starts pointing fingers at their partner, I'm just like, unless you're willing to take some responsibility for the situation that you're in right now, there is no point in having this session. Like we all need to take some responsibility for a relationship breaking up. I don't care how bad, you know, there's like, if it's 5%, take 5% because that's the only way we're going to come to some sort of agreement. So that is talking to one another. There's rules. You have to have the difficult conversations. Now let's get on to the last C word. We reviewed yeah, quick review. Curiosity is the umbrella C word because it shows that you're willing to see things a different way. You're willing to understand your partner. You're willing to repair or maintain this relationship. Um, cause if, you know, the fact that couples show up and want to have a session tells me that they're willing. You know, even if like sometimes couples come to me and they'll say, you know, I'm, I don't really want this relationship, but I, I'm just respecting my other partner and I'm willing to have this one session. You know, there's some sort of willingness. Okay. Curiosity, big umbrella C word term. We spoke about connection, connection being like sharing, sharing space with someone. It's, it sounds minimal. But you know what? Like, I mean, oh my gosh, I just thought of another C term, companionship. Companionship and connection is really the same thing to me. It's really why people grow old together. You know, like when you think of it, after, like if you're 90, like it's, you're, just, you're more or less a companion, excuse me, a companion than anything else. Like, most people that reach 60, 70, 80 years of age, they're, they're not really wanting to like, you know, remarry. They're just happy having a companion. They're, they're, they're like, I, you know, marriage is nice, but like, I just want somebody to share a life with. So to me, companionship and connection is the same thing. It's sharing life with somebody. And then we have collaboration. That was the, the other C word, collaborate, talk, difficult conversations. Now we're moving on to compromise. And I mentioned to you before, this is a tough one. Compromise, well, unless you're a people pleaser, you're, you're very skilled at compromise if you're a people pleaser. I certainly hope you are not a people pleaser. And if you are, let's make you a recovering people pleaser because um, 
hey, you're doing things that, you know, because you're scared that the other person's not going to like you um, if you don't do the things that they want you to do. And you're lovable, you're worthy, you're you're the gift, you're the prize, you're the whole damn vibe, no matter what you do, okay? Like, you're just perfect as you are, okay? I always say, you do you, boo. Like, you are amazing, just the way you are. Bruno Mars song, right? Um, so, okay, compromise. But there's give and take in every relationship, right? Like, I mean, you have to realize this is what's super important about comp- being able to compromise. That you, like sometimes when we think of generations and generational trauma, this is why sometimes relationships are so difficult. difficult because just think of it. You were programmed by your parental upbringing. Okay. And when you remember when I said programming before program is like, it's downloaded, it's sort of in your, it's in deep in your psyche. You don't even know you're doing it. I always give the analogy of driving a car at first, like it seemed really tough, but now you, you do it without even knowing you're moving your hand towards ignition or, you know, you're shifting gear, like you just do it. So think about being programmed from especially from the years zero to seven, like you got all these downloads. Your parents got those downloads from their parents. And this is why we talk about generational trauma. Sometimes it's really difficult to break the trauma because it just is, it gets passed on. It's even passed on like like physiology like your physiology just as well, like in the umbilical cord. Um so this is this is why it's so different. You grew up with past experiences that that's all you know is your truth. Like, so for example, if your parents fought, like if they screamed and yelled at each other all the time, um, that's your reality. That's your truth. Like, that's how I'm going to like, you know, you, you, you grow up, you marry somebody and you're just like, okay, normalcy is screaming at you. That's normal. No, it's not normal. Well, to him, to he or she, it's normal. So you got to be willing to see life differently. So that's not the greatest example. Okay. It's, but I'm going to give you an example of, um, let's say childcare. Um, oh yeah. How about you choosing schools for your children and you grew up in a home where private school and education was a huge priority, huge priority. And that's normal for you and your partner, um, you know, your family grew up in public school and you turned out perfectly. Like why, you know, like, why? So the whole idea of negotiation is really helping your partner understand your perspective in a way that they, I always say this, in a way that they feel you, that they don't hear you. And this is where vulnerability and speaking about your emotions and your feelings, it has to like you have to do this if you're going to get to a point of compromise. If you're not willing to speak in a way that is like, is that your feelings are coming out very powerfully, you're not going to be able to compromise with that person because that's where like, that's where someone goes, you know what? That's not my reality. Like my reality is private schools are the best. But after you sharing your your deep feelings on why, you know, for you, public school 
I get you now. Like I, I get you. I understand why this is so important for you. So, you know what? I mean, but this is my understanding of private school and what private school did to me. Maybe there's a compromise there, right? It's sort of like, okay, let's do the first two years in private or let's do, do the first two years in public and, and we promise that we're going to renegate, uh, renegotiate, renegotiate this after two years or, or we're going to do the research. You know, we're, we're going to visit a couple of private student schools. We're going to visit a couple of public schools. It's sort of like that is so much stronger and better then, you know, it's my way or the highway. This is what I grew up with. It's because like what we, again, what we need to understand is sort of like, that was your past experience. This is my past experience. Who's to say one is right and one is wrong. There's no such thing as right or wrong. It's, it's your past experience, which means it's your truth. Your truth is not their truth. Your truth is just your truth. There is no universal truth. So, and you can see if someone's highly defense, defensive, remember that's one of the, the behaviors that the Gottman say. If, if that, if that comes riding into your relationship, that is not a good sign. This relationship is not going to work. If you continually try to defend, you have to think, when someone defends, like in an army, they're, they're like, they're offensive. They're, they're, there's no, there's no collaboration there. It's sort of like, I, my goal is to win and overcome you. It makes no sense in a relationship. Why are we trying to overcome another person? Why? And you have to think your ego here. It's like, I need to win. Why do you need to win this conversation? Like, isn't it much more like, you know, like, isn't it much more beautiful to compromise on something than win it? Like, you know, problem solve together. Like that's, that is what makes a relationship work guys. So yeah, I mean, I want you to really think Think about like these, these, these C words and all the C words evolve, um, involved in a relationship. And if you can constantly, oh my God, there's another C word, constantly keep these C words, you know, in your relationship, then you're going to have a good relationship. You're going to be able to repair your current relationship, you're going to be able to maintain and build on your relationship, like make it stronger, make a good foundation. And really like, just think of it as business. Sometimes this is just good business. You know, if this is like good business is putting 10 minutes of your time into your business every day, right? Do you think your business is going to last if you like are on vacation, you know, 51 and a half weeks of the year and you don't look at your business, it's not going to work. We have to do the uncomfortable things. Sometimes we have to look at the books and that's very, you know, could be very uncomfortable if your business is not doing well and you, you need to look at the books if your relationship's not doing well, you need to look at, you know, what's going wrong instead of ignoring it. It's very, very similar, similar to doing business. It really is. So, um, and sometimes people just like business because they think it's more black and white, but your relationship can be very black and white as well. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot of, emotional stuff like that's what I mean when, when like emotion is important when it comes to sharing your feelings super important um but sometimes we bring a lot of emotion into the relationship where it's not necessary 
that's where like women can make it sometimes, you know, I always say when your drama becomes your trauma, like, I mean, it's sort of like, we, we don't, you know, this is not that deep guys, <laughs> you know, it's not that deep, but in terms of compromise, you need to bring in the emotion. You need to talk about your feelings 100%. But this other stuff, talking every day, um, sharing time with the person, you know, being curious, asking questions. This is not that difficult. So, well, I hope you enjoyed. And for those of you who stayed with um, me the whole time, I really appreciate it. Um, reach out if you have any questions. I love helping people. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks once again for joining me on another great episode of I Think I Can podcast. If you liked it, please subscribe below so you don't miss out on any future episodes. And until next week, treat each day like it was your last because each new day is a privilege that we shan't take for granted. Cheers and have a great week. Bye-bye.